Hello and welcome to the Knowing and Growing show. I'm Keith Beasley and I'd like to welcome you to my latest exploration into everything to do with how we know, how we really know deep down, and as we know, how we grow. Today I'm talking to One Spirit Interfaith Minister Michelle Murphy and we're going to be talking about miracles and in particular a course in miracles. Welcome Michelle. Hi, Keith. Hi. Hello. Can you first uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and in particular how you came to be interested in miracles and of course in miracles? Yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Michelle, Interfaith Minister, as you've said. Uh, me and the Course in Miracles. Right. I first got the book, it'll be four years this September. Uh, I'm not even sure how I came across it really. I think it was through Marion Williamson, actually, who's a uh, a wonderful teacher and uh, loves the course and uh, went and bought the book I remember in Waterstones in Chester I live here in, in Wrexham um, so I got the book nearly four years ago now and joined a group in Chester uh, which was great and I looked up where the nearest group was and there was one close by so that was lovely and I've been studying it since then and I think that book really has led me to my training and the seminary in the One Spirit Interfaith uh, Foundation in London where I spent uh, two years part-time um, traveling up and down to London to train to become a One Spirit Interfaith Minister. So that's a little snippet of me in the course I guess, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So what exactly is A Course in Miracles? Mm, what is A Course in Miracles? Well, for people who've never heard of it. Yes, of course, yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, well, it's a mind training, actually. It's a mind training, which sounds uh, <laughs> already scare people, but that is what it is. It's an undoing of the ego. It's a very large book with about, I think, 1,200 pages of text and a 365 lessons, uh, one a day, although I, I'm actually myself only on lesson 91. <laughs> but... Um, all that's okay as well. We don't want to get into, it's not a competition, you know, or a race or uh, anything like that. But it, it, it is a very big, lovely blue book, and it was channeled, um, scribed, if you like, by a woman called Helen Shookman in the, in the late 60s. It took her seven years, actually, to scribe it. Um, and it was, I think, first published early 70s. So it's it's been in publication now about Ooh, I think it is sort of about 40 years, really, between 40 and 50 years since its uh, beginnings, really, of the course. And for me, it's a training, if you like, a training or a teaching, um, moving from fear to love and then doing of the ego, and which is for me, you know, the, um, the personal self of quite often worry, doubt, anxiety, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, and, and moving to love. So that's in a bit of it in a nutshell, a little bit of how I would describe it, you know. Mm. Okay, I mean, that sounds really powerful, whether we're on a, a journey of spiritual discovery or whether we're trying to improve our emotional intelligence uh, or whether we've just uh, got a few blocks in our life. So it, it's good for all of those, I guess. Yes, exactly. It meets you where you are. You know, you'd, you'd either be drawn to it or you wouldn't, as, as with any uh, uh, teaching, you know. Um, and, yeah, so three and a half years when I when I first uh, encountered the course, of course, I read it now very differently to what I did then. Mm -hmm. It's grown with me, you know, and I've grown with it. So, yeah, it will meet you where you are, exactly, yes. Can, yes. can we uh, give our, our listeners and viewers a... Uh, uh, an example of, of what this is all about. So perhaps you could read us today's yes. lesson. Yes, actually I've got, today's lesson was quite long, but what I have got is, it's like I said, there's a text, there's a lesson, then at the back of the book there's a manual for teachers. Okay. Um, and I got a little bit from there, it's called Defenselessness. Ah. So it, it talks of the, um, I think there are 10 traits of a, of, a of a teacher of God being generosity, defenselessness, joy, tolerance, gentleness, honesty, trust, I know open-mindedness, is open -mindedness, faithfulness, patience. Yeah, so all of these things. And I'm just going to read a little bit from 
defencelessness. Ooh, nice. So um, God's teachers have learned how to be simple. They have no dreams that need defence against the truth. They do not try to make themselves. Their joy comes from their understanding who created them. And does what God created need defence? Read that again. And does what God created need defence? Wow. No one can become an advanced teacher of God until he finally understands that defences are but foolish guardians of mad illusions. The more grotesque the dream, the fiercer and more powerful its defences seem to be. So strong words here, <laughs> you know, again. They are. Um, yes, um, it doesn't beat around the bush when you really get into it, you know. Yet when the teacher of God finally agrees to look past them, past the illusions, past the ego, past the doubts and the fear, so yet, when, yet when the teacher of God finally agrees to look past them, he finds that nothing was there. Slowly at first, he lets himself be undeceived, but he learns faster as his trust increases. It is not danger that comes when defences are laid down. It is safety, it is peace, it is joy, and it is God. Wow. That's, yes. Well, I like that. And, and what's coming to mind is this not needing to defend ourselves. And yes. something I've noticed over the years that the more I try and justify myself on a position, the more likely it is that I'm kidding myself uh, um, and I've just got attached to an idea. Yes, yes, yes. We come outside ourselves, don't we? And uh, and that's when we're looking for looking for something, aren't we? Either looking for <laughs> something to comfort us, or perhaps someone to pin our some guilt upon, you know. But yeah, it goes very deep into um, undoing this guilt, you know. And uh, the lovely line I love from the course is God son is guiltless and in his innocence is his salvation Whew, again very powerful very powerful stuff it yeah it's a, it's a complete it's a complete turnaround isn't it to to our conditioned thinking yeah. and and i think what's what's coming over in just these short few bits you're sharing with us is is how powerful it is now, how well, one of the things I found is that often people don't want to listen to this this deeper, more powerful stuff because it's it's uncomfortable. So, how in doing the course do do we get do you get over that? If you're in mm -hmm. in your group or if you're with a client, how, how do you encourage them to actually think and feel uh, sort of what's really going on and being said? Yes, yes, yes. As that is it, isn't it? Without judging um judging anybody because as soon as i go into judgment of course or i'm pushing or forcing anything and and what do i know you know i i uh i i can only speak for myself yeah it's just with gentleness with gentleness and you know the course always asks us to see of course our brother as whole and healed in fact i've got a lovely poem here i'll share with you later that um helen shookman the scribe wrote about healing and about seeing everyone as um, allowing others to be where they are and who they are and how they are and trusting in Holy Spirit, you know, that whatever I'm doing in my little group, I've started a little group here recently in uh, Wrexham, okay. teaching Course in Miracles. And I can, I've been quite a lot of Eckhart Tolle um, working on a book of his, actually, because it seemed to feel right for the group. Okay. Um, so, yeah, handing it over to the Holy Spirit, knowing that whenever I'm <laughs> trying to lead, you know, or trying to push, <laughs> that um, I need just to come back into myself, into the moment, and do what feels right in the moment. And it, it is, because as I said at the beginning, you know, uh, I'm reading it very differently now to what I did uh, three and a half, nearly four years ago, you know. And uh, I think what's really coming in for me is bringing everything back to myself so I'm responsible for how I feel yes. you know without, without guilt or without sort of having trying to be perfect with none of that but just gently and with God's help um, bringing things back to myself back to peace um, and with great gentleness yeah hmm. so, so could you give an example of a particular, say, situation where three years ago you would react in one way, that because of doing the Course in Miracles, that you're now responding differently rather than reacting? 
Yes, yes, yes. It's been a slow process, and you know, I'm a very stubborn ego, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, uh, well, I notice, I think awareness, that's what's grown with me. So I'm noticing yeah. more when I've come out of myself, when I've sort of thought, ooh, you know, is this person, you know, being funny towards me, or um, do I feel, do I feel, um, do, feel a, do I feel defense? You know, noticing when this defense comes up in me you know, more and actually handing that over to Holy Spirit and coming back to to myself, back to, and often using my lesson. You know what my lesson for today is miracles are seen only in light. And a miracle being a shift really in perception from fear to love. So again, as soon as I know that I have nothing to be afraid of, then my something happens in awareness, something you know, just in noticing that I've gone into some slight fear or anxiety or defensiveness, and I notice that I sort of relax and the fear disappears, you know, and then the, the, just something else unfolds, I find. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so let me go back there. You, you just basically defined a miracle in terms of a course as a shift in perspective. Perspec perspective? Perception, a shift per in perception. Perception yeah. from perspective, fear to yeah. love. So, yeah. I mean, that's a very different uh, definition or idea of a miracle from, from what we might imagine, which would be like walking on water or yeah. you know, turning water to wine or so on. Would you like to say a little bit about how the two are, are the same thing or maybe they're not? Yes, yes. Well, I must say miracles, I mean, I haven't really studied up on miracles for this talk. I must say, and I did, because I, I, as you say, we tend to think of miracles from the Bible, things appearing or disappearing and you know a sort of magical almost you know so I haven't really thought a lot about miracles a lot in in those uh, terms although the course does say there are no hierarchies in in miracles there are no um, limitations if you like you know um, so yes of course anything can happen anything is possible with God but for me, it's very much this, and the course does. If any, you know, when I've asked people, so what is this miracle? It, it is this, this, this change in perception from from fear to love. Where, and for me, there's there's something about a doubtlessness as well, because the ego always wants to doubt, doesn't it? But Oh, you know, but, 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 you know, I, <laughs> I, 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 I yep. love them, but, you know, but they're so horrible, or I want to, I want to be, you know, more, um, I don't know, it could be anything, couldn't it? You know, the ego loves the whole but situation. So for me, the miracle is when there is no but, you are trusting in God's love, you know, and, and knowing that uh, that is the truth. It's the truth, and the truth liberates, isn't it? Coming back to the truth, back to oneness, back to unconditional love. Yeah, absolutely. So the the miracle is the shift in our per perception, and that results in uh, a change of attitude. And as a result of that, then situations where there had been discord are that is now harmony. And, and that's, that is a miracle in many situations. That's a miracle, exactly, exactly. That is a miracle. What, what more, you know, as, as the Course itself says, that uh, the gift of peace, peace of mind, is no small gift. Absolutely. That's what we really want. You know, we might think that we want power, fame, boyfriend, whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But really, it's... Um, <laughs> It's the peace of mind, you know, that is no small gift, isn't it? And then everything else will unfold as it's meant to be from there. And, uh, you know, God knows everything that we, God is, it's what's the lovely line that comes to me is, it's God's greatest pleasure to give us everything we want. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, I'm beginning to get a feel for it. And, and I like that emphasis on this change in perception and that results in the, the changes that, that we might call miraculous. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. can you give another example of how, when doing the course, you, you can relate the this theory and, and idea and, and lovely process that you're talking about to our own daily lives? So, for example, um, you and I and those of us watching and listening in the UK 
I've got a week to go before a general election and we're bombarded with all this information mm -hmm. and promises and all sorts of stuff. How is the course in Miracle going to help people to, to know how to vote in a week's time? <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, hmm. Sorry, I should have given you a warning on that question. It's okay, it's okay, I know, yes, I'm not political. <laughs> but um, it's, it's for me, I think, again, it's that, go. I keep saying, going within, don't I? But that's what's really been coming up for me this morning as I listen to another wonderful uh, course in Miracles teacher called Michael Murray actually um, it, it's 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 going within and asking for me it would be you know being as being living a spiritual life it would it would be for me to go in and ask uh, perhaps you know if, if I need to know uh, if, I, if I have a question to go within and ask you know what what do I need to do if, if do I need to what do I need to vote who do I need to vote for do I need to vote? You know, all of these things can be asked. And it's a very personal thing, I think, isn't it? For me, you know, the inner state, the outer state is the inner state, and the inner and the outer are the same. Um, so for me personally, it's, 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 I think it's me going back to whatever feelings that this, this, uh, this general election is bringing up in me what asking what needs healing there you know within i think that's the best honest answer i could give from a personal point of view to be honest keith yeah no i like that no, that, that means true and i think that's what i've been finding that this election in the uk in particular where we're, we're, we're having to think outside the labor conservative left right box and i think it's about time it's about time we, we rose above this dualistic you know, way of, of seeing politics Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, to me it is an opportunity to to get a bit deeper into well do we trust these people what do we really want them to do and you know, what is the best way to to run a country or our lives and, mm -hmm. and the answer and the answer is to, to, as you're saying to go within mm -hmm. yes it's funny you should bring it up actually because only yesterday um i was speaking to a friend of Greece and uh we were talking about this. We were saying a mindfulness party. Let's start a mindfulness party. Absolutely. <laughs> party. We've got the Lib Dems. We've got the I don't know. I'm rather hopeless because it's, it's, it's politics. Um, but but of course it is important. Yes, it is about, it's about people's lives. You know. And um, so I had to say, well, why not a mindfulness party? Why not? You know, can we get out there and uh, and and go within <laughs> together? You know, and find and and be, be led by by not by our egos, but by something else, and maybe create something new. So yeah, lovely. Anybody out there who wants to start the mindfulness party with me, come on. Brilliant. <laughs> <You know. laughs> That's what yeah. I like. Let's let's be yeah. constructive and creative. Okay, uh, you mentioned that you've got a a, a reading or um, mm. Mm. from yes, yes, yes. I've got. I'm going to read first quickly. I've got a lovely book here called Holy Shift. <laughs> when the shift happens, yes. Uh, so as it, as I say, the course is all about this shift. You know, a shift in in um, perspective, a shift in in our thoughts. You know, in in, in a different way of looking at things. And I'll let uh, uh, a quote from today from this lovely book, Holy Shift, by Robert Holden. Uh, I can recommend it. It's another book. It's um, April the 30th, we are today. I rest in God today and let him work in me and through me. While I rest in him in quiet and in perfect certainty. Which is lovely. I'll read it again. I rest in God today and let him work in me and through me. While I rest in him in quiet and in perfect certainty. And that's from the workbook part one lesson 120 lovely lovely so these you know it's like as i say it's the book itself is is as has been described as a love letter from jesus to our right mind to our own higher self you could say to our own you know divine within okay. and it really is that for me this is why i love the book and spend a lot of time with it you know it really is it does i feel it speaks to 
um, my right mind, the divine within, my the, the Holy Spirit within me, you know, um, call it what you like, the divine within, and it is a love letter from 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 a divine source, I feel, and, and, and the scribe, you know, was, when, when asked who was right, who was, who was, it was Jesus, it's scribed from Jesus um, to Helen Schuckman. Um, so that's lovely, and I've got here one of her poems, which I know she was obviously, over the seven years that she was scribing the course, she was a psychotherapist, actually, in America, and an atheist, actually, um, and what happened was her and a colleague um, were fed up of all the squabbling and um, discord in their place of work as psychotherapists in America. And they, he said, or well, her colleague Bill Setford said to her, there must be a better way. And she said, yes, you're right. And they actually, the two of them weren't really getting on, had troubles, but they obviously wanted to, to work through it. So he said, there must be a better way. And she said, yes and I'll help you, I'll help you find it. And unfolded over the next months, you know, she, um, it, it, it started, well, what happened, you know, she started having uh, quite spiritual experiences and, um, and then they started describing the course and they very much helped each other over seven years, you know, because she was obviously quite perturbed at what was happening. But when you read the, the actual book, you know, you can see it's, um, as I've already let read a little bit, it's, 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 it's amazing, you know, it's amazing what, what come, what's, what's written, so she was, so she was very much helped by Bill Thetford, um, so yeah, what, what a beautiful story, I think, of two people joining and uh, looking for a better way, and in asking, being answered, I think that's the real, so, you know, we are answered when we ask. When we ask for help, we are answered. How wonderful. And here's her poem on healing. Um, to heal, it is not needful to allow the thought of bodies to engulf your mind in darkness and illusions. Healing is escape from all such thoughts. You hold instead only a single thought, which teaches you your brother is united with your mind. So bodily intrusions on his peace cannot arise to jeopardize the son whom God created sinless as himself. Think never of the body. Healing is the thought of unity. Forget all things that seem to separate. Your brother's pain has but one remedy, the same as yours. He must be whole because he joins with you and you are healed because you join with him. Mm. Wow, yes. And how lovely, you know, forget all things that seem to separate, you know, it's, it's, and the court keeps on saying this to us, you know, don't see your brother as a body, as a person, as a persona, you know, with, with flaws, of course, yes, but see, see him as whole and healed and innocent. So, so one of the ideas of air then is to help us to see our similarities rather than our differences. Yes, yes, exactly. To see, to see beyond almost um, beyond right and wrong, isn't it? Beyond right and wrong, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Wonderful. So uh, I think we can uh, just give a, a couple of moments to reflect on, on that idea. Uh, one of the things I like to do in, in this show is to, to not feel the need to fill it with words. Yes. What does the Course say about words? Mm, mm that they are symbols of symbols, you know, twice removed from, from the experience of truth, you know, they're pointings, what is it, another, I know other teachers talk about it as, you know, the pointing to the moon, the words are literally the finger, you know, but they can't, and the Course talks about this, I can't teach you, the experience of love has to be experienced, that I can teach you the barriers to um to love that we have you know the blocks 
I like new that. acts of love. Yeah. I yeah. like that. And, and that ties in with many of the ideas that I share. Uh, that is one of, for example, one of the few things when I was doing my PhD research, I came across this idea. One of the few things on which philosophers agree is that the description of a thing is not the thing itself. Yes. And that, that's exactly what you've just said, isn't it? That mm. we cannot experience love. We, we cannot know love except through experiencing it. Uh, the words are, yeah. are just pointers. That's right. Yes, yes. And the Course says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is, is, is it actually says, is within. And it even goes further to say the kingdom, the kingdom is you, is you, which is beautiful, isn't it? You know, that it's, it's all, again, it's all, this is, this is, and, and love is what we are when we let go of all judgment and actually describes love as being an absence uh, of being without judgment. So not non-judgmental, <laughs> but without judgment. You know, That's it's good. very deep, you know, it so is. there is no judgment. There's no, there's no judging, there's no condemnation. There's, it's, it's, it's transcendent, so it's transcending as you say, duality, and I know you transcending thought, really, isn't it? And I read a lovely line, actually, by Eckhart Tolle about certain uh, thoughts and how we, we've we become possessed by thought instead of just using thought. Mm. Thought isn't bad. Of course, it's wonderful. For me, it's like part of my imagination and being a writer as well. It's, you know, that's, that's beautiful, isn't it? But when, it's when we become possessed, possessed mm. by our thoughts, isn't it? Yeah, we you get know, attached we to them. To we, we have to transcend this, 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 these um, thoughts that separate, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And again, there's so much in what you're saying, and, and thus from the A Course in Miracles that, that relates to this transcending thought, which was actually the, the title of my PhD thesis. Mm, yes, yes. And I've been thinking about it today. <laughs> quite drawn to write something about transcendence and uh, so yes even just those words transcending thought has, has, has really um, has sparked my imagination actually Keith since the meeting which has been lovely yeah yeah absolutely uh, yeah. but at the bottom of it all is the idea that I am that I am I am that I am yes yes yeah it's a mystery isn't it it's a paradox you know it's uh it's it's well, it's to be it's to be experienced, isn't it? And for me, it's it's a process, and you know, and well, the course the course is huge on forgiveness. I must say, I, I know people say it could have even been called a course in forgiveness, but not many people would have probably <laughs> read it. Read it, you know. Yep. <laughs> I think Jesus knew what he was doing um, when he called it a course in miracles. Um, yeah, but it is, you know, the, it, the, the 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 course talks about my function. And my salvation are one, and the function being forgiveness, and it's the forgiveness that leads to um, the, the the recognition that I am guiltless, and so is everybody else. That's you know, true. it's that path of forgiveness, yeah. But true forgiveness, not not forgiveness from a in a worldly sense. You know, that some, that even something was wrong in the first place, but it's it's advanced. You know, God's forgiveness. You know, and then the course even says that in heaven, forgiveness is inconceivable, inconceivable, you know, because wow. God, God loves us just, you know, as, as we are part of God's mind, aren't we? So there's no need for forgiveness in heaven. And this is what, you know, we, we can have here. We can have here because we're part of God, don't we? Absolutely. That, that, is, that really is tremendous, Michelle. So thank you so much for talking us through that. Um, so, uh, would you like to uh, pass to our viewers and listeners how they can contact you, perhaps? They'd like to follow up on any of these ideas with you? Yes, sure. My name's Michelle Murphy, and um, I live in North Wales. And my, in, my, in, my email is Michelle Murphy, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-U-R-P-H-Y, Michelle Murphy, 679 at btinternet.com. Michelle Murphy, 679 at btinternet.com. Yeah. Thank mm. you, Michelle. And is there a, a final closing few words you would like to leave us with to reflect on? Uh, 
Oh, oh, what's your birthday uh, date, Keith? Uh, uh, 9th of August. 9th of August, lovely. So I'll go to my little book here of quotes from the core, daily quotes. Let's see what your birthday this year is, uh, quotes from the course. Father, I come to you today to seek the peace that you alone can give. I come in silence, in the quiet of my heart, the deep recesses of my mind. I wait and listen for your voice. My Father, speak to me today. I come to hear your voice in silence and in certainty and love. Sure, you will hear my call and answer me. Thank you. Wow, mm. I like that. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank you, Keith. Lovely to speak. Lovely to communicate and join with you. Thank Great. you very much. Bye.